before I forget, okay, we are recording. And today we're going to talk about how to use a trading journal or why to use a trading journal. I should say, and I'll show you a little bit about how to use one also. Uh, a trading journal is extremely important. Uh, I think you can learn more from your journal than you can from from paper trading. Um, and the reason being, you go when you do a journal, and I'll show you here in a minute. Um, you can uh, put videos in it if you want to. You can do screenshots. You can do audio recordings. You can do all kinds of stuff and put it on a trade You can keep up with your trades You can keep up with open positions You can keep up with, which I'll show you here in a minute. You'll keep up with most everything. Uh, it also has uh, the ability to have built-in calendars. Now the USDA reports and the economic reports uh, are going to go out in the, uh, uh, the community uh, for the um, uh, monthly subscribers along with seasonal trades. Now here I've got four, I guess you call them databases. They call them something else. Workspaces, I think that's what they call them. All right. Now, here, I've set up different views. Give it a minute here. Here we go. These are different views. These are clo were closed trade. Now, this was 2019. I could go back in here and change this and, and create your own. Now, uh, the course of the month club this month, I'm going to do an entire course starting from scratch, starting from a blank screen in Notion, how to build um, your trading journal, all right? But I just want to show you the one that we built here. Um, and then I started sending out some of the trades and stuff toward the end of the year in um, Telegram to the people that were in the, the room. So I didn't update it past like August or something. But anyway, we started this back in March here. Uh, and I think we'd made $20,000 at the time, March of 31st. Anyway, when we started it, we were up about 20,000. So I put the balance, beginning balance in here. Now, uh, think of this right now as like a spreadsheet, all right? Even though that it's not really a spreadsheet, which I'll show you, think of it for the time being as a spreadsheet. These would be rows in the spreadsheet. These would be columns in the spreadsheet, okay? And you can make and change, obviously, anything that you want to in here. Um, you can move these around if you want this over here, you could have that over there. But anyway, let's look at a trade just to give you an example. You can see where it uh, open, has open here, open here, open, right? And you'll see a little icon next to it, which is um, a document. It shows you that it's a document underneath there. So let's just look at this, the first trade, right? Now I set these up and set it under the group for currencies. Now I could set it, you know, and choose anything that I'd set up in there, all right? Uh, it could be currency, meats, metals, grains, you know, whatever it was. And obviously the British pound is a, uh, the group currencies. Uh, futures or options, I could have, uh, whether it was an options trade, a futures trade or both. Maybe you put on a, um, you know, an option along with the futures contract. The date placed, the date that it got filled, if it didn't get filled at the same time, and, you know, it may have been a, a market order and it would have immediately been filled. It could have been a limit order and got filled later and the date that it was closed, all right? Made or lost, $725. Obviously, that's just a, a dollar calculation here. Uh, if the order was canceled, I would click canceled and it would not show up under closed trades because it wasn't closed, it was canceled. But I'll show you, uh, we'll do that in a minute. You could add another property, which is a, um, a picture or a video. Here's a comment that you could add, right? And here's what I did on April 26th, buying the June British pound with a jump stop of 56 and five, see chart below, okay? Now you can click on the chart and the chart will, will open here. All right, so you could get a you know better idea of what you were doing at that time. All right. Then on April the 30th, move stop to break even. On May the 1st, I raised the stop. So you can you can have um, uh, you know a history of that trade, what you did. All right. And down here when you exited, you could uh, 
copy and paste, and there's the British pound. We exited it was 7375 uh, that day, right? Now then, these are just additional trades, you know, that were placed. Now you can sort them by date, you can sort them by category, like over in here. You can put a table view, which is everything. All right, it'll take it a second, you can see that it's spinning. Right, uh, so these are uh, futures and options. These are open, closed, or everything is closed, obviously, on that year. Right, uh, but you could have it uh, with open trades, closed trades, cancel trades, or anything else that you want. If you had the table view, which says everything. Now, I could put a calendar view in here, which is good, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could put a calendar view in here. Which I could. I did put a calendar view in there. And obviously, it's not the correct date because we're going back in time. Uh, but you could go way back, you know, month by month back until last year, right, which I'll do here just to show you. Right? So here. And so you have a, a calendar view here if you want it. And it gives you a little snapshot of, of what that is. And obviously, you could click on that if you wanted to. I uh, apologize for being a little stopped up. I'm catching a cold, it seems like. All right. And so here you have the calendar view. And you can, like I say, click on it. And it will expand. You can click on the chart and expand it. And it tells you, you know, whatever you wanted it to. It's a futures contract. It's group currencies, August the 1st. Filled on August the 1st. Stayed in it for four days. Got out on the 5th. Made or lost, made 582, right? And you can just keep a history of what you were doing on each day if you made a change on that, okay? Uh, you know, which is kind of nice um, to be able to go back and take a look, all right? Let's go back in here and close this. And we'll go back down here and look. If you ever wanted to know, you can say, I canceled an order. You can have, you know, a view for canceled orders, all right? You could also have uh, closed futures positions, whatever you want to filter by, right? Closed futures positions, closed options only positions, all your currencies. So if you wanted to click on currencies, here are all the trades and currencies, and it tells you at the bottom what you made. Uh, from the time that you started, um, you know, through the year. Uh, and at that time, we were up $11,000 in currencies. You can see the check marks here. It means that one was canceled. Check, canceled, 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 right? And you could go back down here, and it tells you uh, there was currencies, it was futures, it was options. Uh, so if we have any that says both futures and options, I don't think so. Uh, and if you wanted to go over here and look at... Uh, energies, as an example, you can go in here and filter and say, okay, um, made $9,131 in 30. Now I could put another field over here if I wanted to do an average per uh, uh, per trade. You can just divide 9,130 by 30 and I'd have another column over here, which you could see down here. You can calculate, put another column in and calculate. So it gives you an I can set it up to give you an idea of how much you're making per trade and which markets you're doing well in and which markets that you need to work on, right? Uh, here's futures positions, grained, indices, right? Here's like the NASDAQ, the Dow, many, all your indices, the bond. You can see made 680, lost 70, made, uh, made 180, lost 700. Went through a losing streak here, all right? Uh, lost 1,200 on this one. So if you wanted to open that, obviously, just like the other ones, you could look on it. And immediately I got, so three, three September puts and received $1,100 expired in 14 days. And I guess I immediately got out of, out of it and didn't post an update on it. My bad. All right, 30-year uh, bond, NASDAQ. Again, all right, what happened here? Here's all the positions that we had on that day, all right? We took 
2186 in profits that day. Right. Let me stop for a minute and ask it. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I got to turn on some mics here for Gary Smith. Hold on. Grant mic access. Craig, do you have mic access? Hold on. Got to do it for a couple of Jeff. Hold on. Grant mic access. Mike Ward. Grant mic access. Right. Uh, now you can mute yourself and unmute yourself. Uh, when you have something to say or want to ask a, a question or something, just turn your mic on and ask away, right? And then turn your mic back off. So let me stop for a minute and uh, make sure that everybody's kind of following along. Uh, any questions so far? Somebody's got to have a question. Good morning, David. Good morning. Are, are you going to actually go into Notion and show us how to set up a, a, you know, a template or a journal? That's going to be the course of the month club ah. uh, because that's, a, that's, that's about a 10 hour ordeal. Yeah. Uh, to do that. I mean, it's, it may not look like a big project, but it would take me 10 hours today to show you how to set this up. Now, uh, in the course of the month club, you'll get access to that. And like I said, it'll probably be a, I have no idea, it could be a two hour video, but I'm expecting it to be a series of videos uh, that may be 10 hours. So it'll be a lot of different things in it because we're going to start with a blank screen, right? Then I'm going to say, okay, this is what you do, and then you do this, you do that. Right? Now then, anything else? That's a good question, Jerry, by the way. Well, uh, to follow up Jerry's question, David, uh, is it possible for you to send a template with it already set up? And whoa, you're what, you're, what? Sneaking, you're sneaking in on the end of my webinar here today. Okay, okay, that was, <laughs> that yeah. was going to be a bonus for attending today, and a bon actually a bonus for being in the. Um, uh, members club or, or the uh, premium package club or whatever you want to call it. All right. Uh, yeah, I will send you this exact template. Uh, but it's good for you to know how to do your own. All right. And how to adjust things so that you can play around with it. Uh, and Gary, if, if, if I may say without kind of insulting you, and I don't mean to if I do, I uh, uh, Gary's expertise is not computers. That is uh, correct. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And so Gary and I spent a few hours together building his template, his trading journal for his template. And after that, Gary, how long do you think it took you to get familiar enough with Notion that you could do something with it if you wanted to? Um, as far as, uh, using it, you mean? Yeah. If you wanted to sit down and have a blank screen and say, okay, I'm going to start something brand new and I'm going to build something. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, it took me a little while, but, uh, I really like once it was set up, I really liked using it, using it because journaling has been kind of, a Oh, secondary thing to me. I haven't really journaled as well as I should have. Do you find that, that since you've been journaling that you you find it helpful? Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Okay. Good. Thank you, Gary. All right. Do you think a, a, you think a 30 day period of time for people to get used to it would be realistic or would it be less than that? More than that? Oh, I uh, I think 30 days would be, for, for some of your students, it'd probably take less time. But for me, 30 days, I think, is about right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see in here. I can go in here and put losing trades as a view. These are different, what they call views. All right. 
And so these were losing trades. I had 32,000 in losing trades. I could come in here and put winning trades. Uh, we had, let's take it in a minute, uh, 83,000 in winning trades. All right. Um, you could go in here and open positions, pending positions. All right. Closed trades, whatever view that you want to have, you can have that in here. All right. Uh, like if you just want to look at, like I was showing you a while ago, if you want to look at only grains, all right, you can set it up and it's a filter. And that filter would be obviously for groups. All right. So I just filtered group had to be grains. All right. So I pulled up all the grains, 46 of them. And we didn't do that well. We only made $3,000 at a bunch of uh, losing trades. So that goes in there to uh, the point I was making a while ago. You can kind of go in and say, okay, what am I doing well in? What am I not doing well in? Now, I don't know why the 30-year bond here is in grains. So let's fix that. All right. Uh, that would be, I'd have that, uh, it should be. Well, I'm going to use it for indices. Click, click there. All right. And then you'll see that that's going to go away over here. See, it went away. All right. Here, bean meal. Um, you know, I lost $300, $700, was, you know, canceled orders, etc. I could go back in here and look at, you know, anything that you wanted to. You could look at metals. And all I did was filter this database to the group metals. You can see that we made 16 trades, uh, $2,212. Now I could set up another column over here for average sums, you know, average per trade, now, all kinds of things that you could do in here. Uh, so you could check on this column here if you wanted to. You could make this a text, you could make it a numbers, uh, a multi-select, which gives you the opportunities. Like over here, this is a multi-select field. Uh, under groups, uh, which gives you the opportunity to select one out of a multiple group. Well, I'm not going to get into that. That's how you do it. You put formulas in here. You can do all kinds of stuff. Right? And then something else that you can do. Uh, you can, I think I showed you this a while ago. If you want to uh, move a field, you can move a field. Right? You can see we had one canceled order there. All right, let's go back in here and look at, well, add a view. I don't want to do that. That's how to build, and that's going to spoil my course of the month. All right, now something else that is good to keep up with your own seasonal trades. All right, now here were some, some seasonal trades that we put in here. All right. Like on August, and you could sort by end date, start date, set alarms for it, right? Here, you can say start date. Uh, it's, a, it's a date, it's a number, you know, you set up any kind of, obviously it's a date field, right? So the New, the New Zealand dollar, uh, the contract month would be September. Maybe I need to change that one to contract month. But anyway, it's month, September. Direction was bearish. Start date, end date, uh, what the trade minor rating was. It was a four with a high probability, right? And so you can see that each one of these has a column. I mean, a, a document icon next to it. it means there's something underneath it. So you can come in here and put anything that you want to. Now here, right, is just the trade minor history, you might want to call it of that trade right and if i wasn't doing the webinar this would just pop up right away because it's quick uh but since we're doing the webinar issues and up a lot more resources and it's taking it a minute open this here we go so that's the uh trade miner history on that trade right now you can have it set up where it will send you an alarm and notify you that you know there's trades trades coming up. And you can have that alarm go out the day before, two days before, a week before, whenever you wanted to, uh, to do that. Right? Like here's wheat, Chicago, Chicago wheat. Uh, start dates here. 
direction. Now, direction is just a multi field, like we showed you a while ago. Bullish or bearish, those are only two choices you have, obviously. Uh, contract month, September, October. You know, I just typed in September. Probability, high, medium, low, not calculated yet, whatever you wanted to put in there. Uh, now, you could add a property. Well, I'll get into that later. You can add a comment if you want to. And again, you can have it set up or we'll, we'll send you an alert for that. Let's go back in here and look at, well, the same thing for USDA reports here. Right. Now, what's nice in the USDA reports, I've got it set up over here just as a list view. But if I wanted to, you could say calendar view. And you could leave it on calendar view if you wanted to. And let's go back. Here. Well, here's something here, right? It's March, February. We just heard until March. Here's May. Uh, latest U.S. agricultural trade deals was on the 3rd, right? Put that in here. You can put anything that you want to in here. You can cut and paste uh, of the USDA. All I want to know is the date. And that's really the only thing I need to know. I know that the uh, agricultural trade data reports coming out. I don't need to know any more than that, right? Uh, USDA. Now you could search if you just wanted to see the big ones like WASD or something, right? You could do the same thing for economic reports over here to alert you for economic reports, or you could check economic reports uh, uh, on a calendar which is nice. So if you start to enter a trade or something, you want to go in and see if there's some kind of huge economic report that's coming in. Uh, now, obviously this is all manual. You have to put this in yourself, but it doesn't take that long. Um, let's see, uh, Australian dollar consumer price index. It was coming out on July 31st in 2019. You can see a little alarm clock there. So I had an alarm, I could open that. And it tells me something about that uh, consumer price index report that was coming out. And I would have gotten an alarm on that as well. Right? Now, I'll be setting this up in the community, which I'll show you here in a minute, uh, uh, so that uh, people that subscribe to the, you know, well, yeah, I'll go into that a little bit. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me stop again and ask, are there any questions so far? See if I got anybody in here that came in after this that I need to. No, no, no. Okay. Any questions so far? Comments? No, okay. Am I going too fast? Speed right? Not right? Am I losing you as I'm going through? Just right, Dave. I'm good. Everybody okay? I'm good. All right, good. Now, I'm going to show you something in here uh, that you can do for yourself, all right, after you get to use Notion. Now, Notion, for what you're going to be using it for, is not going to be any cost. It's going to be free, right? Uh, but if you had a company and you had several employees and everybody was using it and you were sharing data back and forth and and the, the chat features that it offers now and all kinds of stuff, then you'd have to go to a premium plan, which I think is $3 a month or something. It's cheap, right? Uh, here's bookmarks. If you, you know, something I just threw together for bookmarks here. Uh, here is home. These are all the things that I've got listed under my home, all right? Um, let's see here. This was something that, that I put in. Let me stop. Sherry, for just a moment, I'll be right back. Okay, here. This was something that uh, I just put together called In My Wallet. And it wasn't my idea. Actually, I heard somebody else do that and used it in Notion to say in my wallet, because this has a nice uh, little mobile app too. 
But think about it. If you were, let's say, on vacation in Mexico and you happen to lose your wallet. I won't mention any names, Jerry. But if that were to happen to you, wouldn't it be nice to know what you had in your wallet, all right, with all your information in it, all right? Uh, uh, your Capital One credit card or American Express cards or uh, your identification cards, your driver's license, all right? Uh, passports, all right? My passport, all right, here. Right? So you could have a picture of your passport with your numbers and everything, right? So that you could, you know, easily find anything that you needed to if you happen to lose your wallet while you were on vacation in Mexico, as an example. Right? Um, go back over here to uh, Trading Journal, Economics, USDA mm -hmm. reports, templates. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, mm -hmm. All right. My trading journal, Team CSC, Trading Journal 2019. All right. Let me go over here. All right. These were the medals. We were looking at those. Close trades, winning trades, pending trades, losing trades, and dices. So you can set these up, obviously, like we were looking at for anything that you want to. If you want to look to just for options, I think I've got the options view in here too. Uh, option positions. Here we go. All right, so it shows me every everything that was filtered for options or had options and futures in it. In other words, if it say both, there was one that was filtered for both. All right here. So I had I set this up as a multiple field. I had futures, options, or both. Right. So my filter said, if it says few, if it's options or both, then put it in this field or put it in this list. Right. Uh, silver open. There was the trade. There was the date. All right. Um, that's what we, you know, I did on that one. Um, Silver puts received 1800 in premium and expired in 35 days. Mm -hmm. Get back over here. All right, hang on then. Um, you can set up Notion to do all kinds of things. And there's some good videos, by the way, on Notion uh, in YouTube. Uh, there's a guy in there that, that I watched when I first started trading. And he's very simple, starts with the very basics, like this is a column, you know, this is a row, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. And he's got a series of videos, his name's Archie. So if you search for Notion and then um, something Archie, um, you'll, you'll see him. Uh, and he's got some good little uh, trading videos that are, that are out for it. But this is really important for you because you, you can go back in and, and look at your trades from the past, obviously. And you lost 260 bucks on that. What did I do? I put on metals, futures, and maybe it was just an in and out trade or something, and I didn't put a chart in there for some reason. Right? Uh, here's beans. You can go back in and look. All right. Uh, shorted beans, jump stop on it here. Uh, entered on the 28th and exited on the 4th. So that was six day trade or whatever, right? On the very long, uh, six or, you know, a week long. Right? And you can also put audio files, right? So if you needed to put an audio file, which is nice, or you can do a video, you know, I did, you know, videos and put them in here too, right? Uh, so you can do an audio file and it's good. Let me tell you this. It's really good when you put a, a trade in or a chart or anything else uh, is to be as detailed about it as you can be. Say, this is what I was thinking. This is, you know, what, why I place this trade. I thought that the blue light was broken. I thought slow statistics was coming down. I thought momentum was doing this. I think 
MACD was doing this, price action was doing this, Fibonacci was doing this, all these different reasons that you put that trade on. So win, lose, draw, when you go back in, uh, you know, at the end of the week or end of the month or whenever you take a look at it, to go back in and look and say, was my reasoning right on that or was I wrong on this? Did the trade just go against me, which happens a lot. I don't care how good of a trader you are, trades will go against you. Right. But what adds insult to in injury uh, for me, it happens all the time. You go in and you put a trade on and the trade starts to go against you. And then you go back and look, should I put that trade on? Oh my God, why did I do that? I didn't even look at the weekly chart to see where it was. I didn't look at the 60 minute chart. I just jumped on that out of gut feeling. And that happens. It happens to everybody. Right. So if it happens to you, you're pretty normal, all right? But you can go back in and look at your closed positions, uh, your losing positions. You'll find out more from your losing positions than you do from your winning positions, all right? Your winning trades, all right? Any questions on this so far? Stop again here. Martin, how are you this morning? You guys have any questions? Let me check if I've got anything listed under questions over here on the left. I don't. I don't have any questions. I don't have any chats. So far, is this helpful? Not helpful? I think it's very helpful, Dave. Good. You really should keep a journal. I mean, I, I realize that it's going to take you um, a few hours or a few days to set your first journal up. But after that, it's done. Um, and once you have it done, and if you start using it, I, you probably will continue to use it forever. All right. Um, let's look at a community over here. Now. See this? This is the trading journal, and I can send you a template. I told you I mentioned that a while ago. Gary was asking about that, or somebody was. I think it was Gary, right? Where I can send you this template once you open Notion. And you will have this template. But I'm only going to do that in the uh, the course that I'm doing, which is going to be, like I said, you know, six, eight, ten hours of video. And I'm guessing on that because I don't know. I haven't done it. I haven't done it yet. I've had to start with a blank screen, and um, you know, build something. And it's not that hard. It just takes time. Once you get used to it, all right? Um, back over here to home, just to show you a few things I've listed under my home. Resources, documents, you can put your documents in here. Uh, you know, so if you have important papers or something, you can just take the document, slide it into here, so it's stored in the cloud. Uh, information about your cars, your vehicles, uh, medical records. Um, you know, recipes, if you have recipes, you know, if you cook a lot, uh, links and IDs, I use this a lot, uh, like your passwords and, and things like that, or links to something and you don't want to forget what that link is. So lots of different things that you can use Notion for, I mean, other than a trading journal. Once you get used to it, you'll start using it for all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, you can have templates uh, set up. You can import things in it. Obviously, you have a trash, so if you trash something, it goes trash, right? Um, you know, it's not that complicated to, to see what a journal is. Uh, and I've got this one set up. This is economic reports for the current month. Then, um, come over here to list view, calendar view. Um, 
board view. Right? If I want to change it to a board view, you can have Kanban. Right? I don't know if you know what Kanban is, but Kanban is just a, a series of columns. And if I wanted to move that over there uh, to crude, I could, but it's not. It's Canadian dollars, so I'll move it back over there. But you can move stuff back and forward through dates. You know, if you want to change your date on it, if you want to duplicate something, you can do that. Um, economic reports for everything, G20 meeting, that was all day. And you can also click on it here, and you'll see whatever you posted in there. This came from uh, a website called Forex Factory right? that, I, that I use. So you can see where it said Forex Factory. Here, Forex Factory, all right? And you'll see that it had an alarm. So it sent you an alarm, it sent you an email alarm uh, to let you know, all right? Let's see one. They're pretty simplistic uh, to look at. Uh, let's see here. Uh, these were reports that would affect the Great British Pound. Let me just go on the Forex Factory here. Uh, this is showing you this week. Let's go out until next week or whatever you want to do this month, next month, next week, right? Here. Uh, you'll see that these yellows and oranges, those aren't big ones. Here's one down here, USD, um, uh, Fed, uh, Powell, Fed, Fed Chair Powell speaks, all right? And that's at 1230 on the 14th. I can tell you that that's a market mover. You can come in here, and it tells you a little bit about it, right? And that's forexfactory.com, all right? And then it tells you also... Like core retail sales here. Uh, it tells you what the uh, projected is, what the actual was, and what the prior was. So if you went back a week, let's go back here and look at last Monday, the 4th. All right, the only thing that came out that day uh, was OPEC meeting, and that was all day. Manufacturing PMI for Canada at 9.30 a.m., and this is set up to your local time, obviously. All right, so at 9.30, and then you can open this. And maybe that didn't take place. There's just nothing in there. No, here, no. Uh, here, let's open this one up. And it tells you the actual forecast of previous. And it tells you, you know, uh, why do traders care? You know, what happens if it's, uh, higher than normal, or if it's lower than projection, projected, uh, how does that affect the markets? Right? Uh, so that's another great site. Right? Uh, all right. Again, I'm going to stop and ask if there's any questions. We've been going about 30, 40, 40 minutes or so. And I don't want people to have questions. No questions. All right. Does everybody have grant mic access? I saw somebody come in without mic access. Robert Carroll, hold on. Grant mic access. No mic. Only attendees can share their mic at a time. <coughs> can they revoke access from any one of them in grant? Access to Robert. Okay, I just found this out. I can only have 10 people with a mic at a time. So, Robert, if you have a question or if you want to say something, just send me a chat. I'll turn your mic on and I have to turn somebody else's off. So, if you have a question or send me a chat or anything else, which is over on your left hand side. All right. Um, let's go over and look. Now I'm going to do some explanations of what's going on over on the community here. 
All right. All right. You can see that you've got this live. I didn't know that. Huh. Shows you that the event is live right now. So somebody could go in there and click and come right in. All right. Um, but here, under courses, uh, I've got uh, my premium courses, which is the commodities course and the options course under here. And anyone who has had access, all right, uh, to the online versions of the commodities course in the past or the options course in the past. And if I haven't contacted you yet, you want access to them here. All you have to do is uh, send me an email or a chat would be better up in here. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right. And then I will grant you access to the options course or the commodities course or both. All right. Uh, and it works like it did in Thinkific, but it, it's actually better. And I'll show you why. Here. Um, there was, I think it was under Section 3, Module 3. Was it? No, that was in the options course. But here, if you have a question in here on in, out, in, at, and out of the money, you can put that, uh, type that question down here. Well, here's one, Rich. I'm reviewing Module 3 on CC, uh, CS Options. Please clarify the confusion. Then I answer that. And it will send Rich a notification that he'll see up here in the corner. Uh, as soon as I answer that, and everybody else that, that opens this, that's in the course, obviously, that opens this will see his question and my answer. So it's a, uh, a good place to have ongoing questions and answers about something. You can see the videos are, are, are built in here. You don't have to go to someplace else to watch the video. You just watch them right here, turn them on, turn them off, and there we go. All right. Uh, and then just you can click close or just click off the page, either one. All right. Uh, so I will give you access uh, to that. Uh, if you had the online course on the options course or the commodities course. Now, see, these are notifications up here. Uh, and these are a, this is notifications. Those are chats. Here's, right? Um, 17 people RSVP'd for the webinar today. And I could go back in here and look at that. It'll take me into the event for what that that was all right if i wanted to see all the members you can go down here and look at all the members i won't mention the name that that's a that's a guy named jerry who's a doctor up in cincinnati whoops i'm sorry jerry here uh there's me obviously so if you put your pictures in here you'll see that all right and if you like that person and what they're posting and stuff you can follow them which i'm going to show you here in a minute how to do that. Here's two chats. Glad to see members. Uh, okay, good morning, Michael. Uh, Rich, okay, I'll register. Can't make the walk online. Okay, let's go back over here and you click back to networks up here in the top left hand corner and it'll take you back to your home page here. Now, on your home page, you'll see your activity feed. Come on. There it goes. All right now your activity feed is anytime I or anyone else post something into the community they'll they will see it in here all right now then if you are following or a member of one of the courses have purchased one of the courses or are following a topic which I'll show you here in a minute any any post or article or video or anything else that is in that topic, all right? Here, let me show you. Here is a text. Oops, can't spell. Here is a test for um, options. Topic. 
And then I'm going to add a topic here. And I'll show you why this is there. Options trading. That's one of the topics. And then I'm going to post that. And I could notify everybody that is a member or that is following the topic options. I could notify. I'm going to say don't notify. All right. And here, I'm just going to post in here in a minute. There. All right. Here's test and it says option trading. So you could click on option trading and it will take you. If you're a member, now you won't see it. You won't see that in your activity feed here unless you are actually following options trading, which I'll show you how to do in a minute for leading. But you can click here on options trading. You don't have to go over here and find the topic and open it. It will just open Tish's members, what they're following, right? And there was my topic test for option trading that I just put up. Now I could put a video in there. I could do whatever I wanted to. Right here, I put a copy of the, the webinar Wednesday, which was on our condors for the stock market. Right, and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to delete that. Yes, delete it. Right now, if you go back over here to topics, this is this is kind of key because um, I know that a, a lot of you are in here, but you're not following some of the topics, and some of the topics you might not want, not want to follow. Right? And that's fine. I mean, if it has no interest at all to you don't don't follow it um like stocks if you don't give a hoot about fox uh, stocks then don't follow it or chart patterns or forex or something else you don't have to follow that you can see that i'm following everything and the reason i do that is somebody posts something under here i will see that question and it will show up as a notification for me and then i could come back here and at uh uh Answer it, right? Um, and here's videos that I put in here. Bulls and Bears with Land Turner. Uh, so I put some different videos and stuff in here. You can go back up here to topics. So it's easy. Just come in here and say follow or not follow, follow. And then you'll get notifications uh, anytime somebody uh, posts something in here or ask a question or, or anything else in here. Here's Cape Paso. What's happening? If you don't know what Cape Paso is, I think everybody knows what Cape Paso is. What's happening, right? So if you just want to kind of post something in here, like I just found this picture in here today and it reminded me of a ride down in Chile and Argentina, right? Uh, so I put a picture in here that was highlight, right? Crossing the Andes. Right, close that. Close that. Right. It's slow because I'm doing the webinar. All right. So you can follow that or not follow it if you're interested in it or whatever. Events, interest. Um, that's like my interest is motorcycles. Motorcycle riding. So here, anytime that you see my name, you're going to see underneath it, it says motorcycle touring, right? So uh, John has commodities and options trading. So if you see a, somebody with a similar interest, you can click on it and it'll show you the other members with that interest, right? And not everybody has filled this out, obviously. All right, uh, members, you can go in, what's about, I forgot what about is. Oh, it just tells you what the site's about. But anyway, uh, here. Uh, you can go back in and uh, select members in here. And it will show you show you the other members. And you can uh, see people here. There's John, John Annie, Michelle, John. Uh, and if you like some of the posts and things that they're putting up, you can follow that person just like you follow a topic. And obviously, I follow everybody, right? Um, no, I don't. These are new people. I haven't put that in there yet. But anyway, uh, there's Eric, uh, Jerry, Jeff Taylor, right? Um, so you can follow anybody, and you'll see all the posts, no matter what where they post or whatever, if you're following that person. Uh, explore groups. These are groups. 
in groups here the the live daily trading room that we're doing all right which you have to subscribe to weekly webinar archive you have to subscribe to that's part of the premium package seasonal trades usda and economic reports right uh which are part of the premium package or the live daily trading room package uh just as an example i'm uh, making a sales pitch but just to show you if you were to click on that um you can try it for free you know it's got a free trial and it shows you what you have access to and every month when i do a new course you'll have access to that course so every course that i do every month you'll have access to it so at the end of the year you'll have 12 courses next year you have hopefully 24. all right um went home all right uh any questions on this real quick because we're going to kind of wrap it up what can i do in the community to make the community better somebody tell me because believe it or not i spend a whole lot of time here you can click on discovery by the way which under discovery, it's going to show you a list of these carousel icons here. Come on. Anything, anything that I can do or, or change or something in here? Right now, I think it looks great. Okay. If you were me, what would you add? <clears throat> well, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Uh, like I was showing you a while ago, this uh, picture that I put in here earlier this morning, no one would see that. You wouldn't see that in your uh, activity feed here unless you had subscribed uh, to uh, the Capasso topic but if you subscribe to get possible topics and any other topic you will see any post or questions or comments uh on your own personal activity feed and i'll show you how to manage your notifications uh and then you'll see down here uh, i had one post somebody uh, rich said uh d nice for you sharing thanks All right uh here's another one how to use your journal because i subscribe to those where i posted that that's it the post that I sent out to everybody this morning, All right? Uh, here you can see that that's Team CSC live trading room, and the topic was trades placed in that membership area. All right, uh, you can go over here to your personal profile, and you can say your settings, your settings, network settings. I think it's your settings. Um, you go back in here and turn on and off notifications because you don't want to get bombarded. I know that you don't. Uh, notifications here. Uh, email updates on or off. Push mo uh, notifications on or off, right? Uh, you get a daily digest. I highly recommend a daily digest um, because if you put ac as activity happens and you're following a lot of topics and people, you'll get a ton of emails, right? Uh, if you put on digest, it'll just send you a digest of all of that, right? Um, so you can turn on or off email, pop-ups, whatever you want. Um, any of the controls in here, you can turn on and off, right? Um, community groups and course notifications. Um, obviously, I have everything turned on. And you'd only be able to turn on what you remember of or purchased right uh, so that's how you handle your your notifications so you don't get bombarded um here and close this it's running really slow because i'm doing the webinar recording uh but uh, these are uh notifications these are chats so you can see chats you can go back and forth with people and carry on personal chats Michael said, good morning, Rich Roberts, you know, Charlie. 
Paul White, I haven't seen Ethan Room, I haven't seen him in a week. I wanted to check on him, see how he's doing. All right, so that's all for the communities. Any questions on anything we've gone over? Hopefully this helps a little bit. Gary, you you created your, your journal. Did you use the template that I sent you or did you create your own? Or own? I, I believe I used the ones you sent me. Okay. And then you the, the, the template is strictly that. Once I send somebody a template, that means that's yours in your own notion and you can adjust it and change it, do whatever you want to to it, add to it, whatever. You're not doing, you're not gonna change my template. That becomes yours. Right. Uh, I don't know what templates are down here. I haven't looked at that in ages. Oh, here. Templates, reading lists, journals, travel planners, blog posts, simple notebooks, habit trackers, resume, job app. Anyway, those are just templates that somebody else has already done. Personal templates, human resources, engineering, education. So if you wanted to use you know, that template you can, Notion has already set that up, somebody did, and anyway, you can use templates, All right? Uh, if you have any questions or something, send me a chat or comments or anything else. Go back over to the communities, find my name here, and you can send a chat, All right? Tells you what you know, what I'm a member of, which group I'm a member of, topics that I'm following, anything else, and um, you can send me a chat. All right, all right. If you don't have any other questions, I'm going to call it a day here. Hopefully, uh, I've sold you on the idea of having a uh, a trading journal because it really is important. All right. Um, if no questions or comments or anything else, uh, here, chat. Got a chat. Hold on. I see a red arrow. Great overview. Okay. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, like I said, questions, comments, or anything else, let me know. And um, I'll let you know when I finish this course this month on building a trading journal. Now, I don't know how many hours it's going to be. Like I said, it may be. Two hours, maybe 10 hours. Who knows? All right. Uh, I'll see you guys next Wednesday on the Wednesday webinar. Obviously, we had to reschedule this. All right. Take care. See you. Bye. Thanks.